what is going on youtube so this guide is going to be on al kwong i know i said i was going to cover all the assassins first but i decided al kwong's close enough to being an assassin and i literally have been spammed by all of you guys to just do this fucking god so i decided i would do it early make you guys happy and kind of get you guys off of my back a little bit and we're just going to jump right into it as always go right into the the item build so she's the magi standard you're looking to do as much damage as possible on Quang. Your early game is terrible. You don't do a lot of damage. You really just want to farm and last hit people as much as possible in the early game. Shoes of the Magi's are going to help that. Dynasty Plate Helm is going to allow you to get in and kind of box against the other junglers and the, the 2v2 matchup between the mid jungle and the mid jungle. Um, if the other jungler is not a physical jungler or the mid is not, say, say the other team has a Ymir jungle and then they have a Neath middle. Still want Dynasty Plate Helm, but if they're running Magic Jungle, Magic Mid, you probably want to swap out the Dynasty Plate Helm for whatever item feels more comfortable for you. You can go into more Lifesteal, which isn't necessarily recommended, but you can do that. You can always pick up a Poly, and then after Poly, you could pick up a Wing Blade, and then you could go into the regular build. So these items would swap, and then this would become Wing Blade. Just depends on how the game is going for you. If you're really, really feeling greedy, drop the Dynasty Plate Helm for a Doom Orb. That is super greedy. It's a really fun build, but it's super greedy. But remember, that's only if there's no physical coming out of either the mid laner or the jungle. So if there's any physical at all there, go on Dynasty Plate Helm. It's great. So you're getting even more pen. This allows you to box and be in the fight a little bit more, which is awesome. Also gives you power. And this allows you having pen on boots, pen on the helm. You can get Polynomicon third and not wait at, for later build, honestly, which is it's just great. Your poly procs off of your ability. So if you two and then three... Your poly is proccing on the dragon strike, which is awesome. So you're getting damage from the dragon, damage from the three, and polynomicon proc. It's ridiculous. It's a ton of burst. It's pretty key to having Quang do what Quang does. Quang is not an auto attack god. Quang is not meant to be in the middle of a fight auto attacking over and over again. He is a mage. He has played like a burst mage. He wants to one shot people and poke people the fuck out. And when you do hit people really hard, that's when you go in and you auto attack because they're running away. They're not able to fight you. They aren't able to win the 1v1 once ha half their health is gone, right? So after Polly, you're picking up Obshard, just more power and pen. Simple, straightforward. Soul Reaver, to continue with the idea of one-shotting people, it is awesome. It's great. You you get this because you have, then have all your abilities in Polly and you have Soul Reaver. After that, you're picking up Rada to Hootie. Rod just allows you to one-shot anybody, really. Like, maybe not the tanks, but you get tanks down to 30% really fucking fast. So having power and pen, power and pen and defense... Pen and it's not so much the lifesteal, it's more so the proc from Polly. And then you got more pen, and then you've got burst and magic power, and then you've got even more magic power. It's just unreal. And as I said, this god is played to get farm, one shot people. And because of that, you're looking to pick up purification, which are beads. You just want to make sure you're never in position to die, and you want to pick up blink so you can dive the back line with Al Kwong in team fights. Once you get to a point where you're doing a lot of damage, you're really looking to let your team engage. Kind of let the fight spread out a little bit and then pick off the people who are who are easy to pick off. If there's someone right in front of you, fucking kill them. If there's a mage in the back you can blink to, blink on them and one shot them. Whatever you have to do to one shot somebody is your goal. If people are out of position and you can just ult them up in the air, do that. That's pretty much how your early game goes. You're looking for the people who are just out of position, easy to kill, easy for you to pick off. With Quang, pay attention to other people's actives, knowing when beads and Aegis are down on the other members of the other team is just it's the key to playing this god you have to know timers meaning you see someone use beads at three minutes know when they're going to be back up know you can ult between three and five minutes and if that happens go for it go for the kill it's a free kill there's nothing they can do about it ability wise you're maxing your three so you're starting out with your three to clear it's on a really short cooldown so at level one it helps you clear a lot then i go my one to be safe at the beginning of the game uh, the one does do a little bit of damage, as you can see. Not so much early game, more of a late game damaging ability. But I picked this up just to be safe uh, in case I get caught out. Because as I said, Quang isn't meant to fight early. You're meant to live, farm, and get to the mid to late game. Just shit on people that way. So after that, I level my two. It's more damage to have these three abilities at the same time. Then I'm maxing my three. Um, after For the rest of the game, max the three, then max the two, then max the one, then max the ult. The reason for this being the ult damage is not important. 99.9% .9 of the time you're ulting to maybe not 99 so say 80% of the time you're ulting to execute somebody to kill them you're not ulting for the damage sure there are plays you can make and do damage with the ult uh because people aren't maybe they have beads or whatever and it's, it's a good play it's something you can do most of the time you're just trying to execute them so really only leveling this up to get the health increase so it's not important 
max your three max your two max your one because late game your one hits like a bus then max your ult last so when you're in late game team fights you sustain a little bit more and you can go back in pretty straightforward right as i said gameplay wise you're just looking to farm out kill the people easy to kill early and then start one-shotting people late game the never gonna change your build doesn't really need to vary too much in regards to your because that, that's the play style every game the play style does not change matchup wise there really aren't too many super hard counters to this god some gods gonna be harder to kill but that's not something you should really be worried about mages you can one shot all of them Nuwa can be frustrating when played defensively you try to one shot a Nuwa and the Nuwa drops creeps and stuns you you get fucked up pretty hard it can be a pain in the ass the Culkin can be annoying simply because of the tornadoes and the dot on you for your invis can be frustrating. Shouldn't be a problem though. Janus's mobility also very annoying. It's hard for you to chase a Janus who's portaling through walls is playing. You don't have that much mobility. That's why you have a blink. So just watch out for that. Also, Agni's dot on the dash and ranged lockdown can be frustrating. But aside from those gods, even those gods really, you can play around it. They aren't hard counters to this god. Hunters, I don't mind any of the hunters. Um, if they have a lot of mobility. A little bit harder to kill, a little bit more frustrating. You have to make sure you think about how the, your blink fight's going to go or your one-on-one -on -one fight's going to go if you ever take them. Remember, other gods have abilities. Know what abilities are up or down or what they're going to do. The hardest really counter to Quang in the hunter role is going to be Ho Yi. Actually, there's probably two. Ho Yi because Ho Yi's two puts the invis detection up. So you can't really run around the map freely. Well, you can't run around in the team fight freely if Ho Yi puts the two on you. Also, Neath because getting out of the early game with a Neath ulting you on cooldown in team fights can be... It just, it's just a bitch. It's, it's hard as shit. It can be very frustrating. So I wouldn't say Neath is a hard counter. Just a very frustrating thing to play against when played correctly. Um, Guardians. You kill all the Guardians easily over and over and over and over again. Um, the ones with immunities are going to be the roughest. So Sobek is going to be kind of hard because he can go immune. You can't ult him. Kumba's passive can be kind of annoying. You do hard counter Kepri, obviously, because your execute overrides the revive from Kepri. Um, everyone else super easy to kill. I love killing Athena's, Bacchus's, Ymir's, all of them. I love killing all of them. Fafnir can also be annoying because he can immune your damage. So really, Sobek frustrating. Fafnir, pretty frustrating. All the other ones you should be able to kill. Should it be the end of the world to kill them at all? Watch out for healing from gods like Sylvanas because they can heal above the threshold, especially with Meditate. That's an active you want to watch out for. The Meditate can really be frustrating for you if you are just going in all and they Meditate last second and you get med baited and your all gets wasted. Can be frustrating. Warrior wise, all of them once again super easy. Guan can be frustrating because you can't alt him while he's alting. He also has heals, good heals. So I'd say Guan is one of those gods that you want to try to shut down early, or you want to have your team shut down early, so he's not a big presence for you late game. Um, Ama's ability to kind of chase you if you're out of position can be frustrating. All the other gods I have no problem with at all. I love playing against all the other warriors, um, and just true assassins. Arachne, spiders reveal stealth, and Arachne is amazing at 1v1ing even against Quang. So watch out for Arachne. Watch out for Nija, because Nija is actually pretty good at getting because Onija it's basically wants to do the same thing. Nija wants to engage instantly, not take you up in the air, fuck you up, and either have his team finish you off or whatever. Have have the team finish you off, or you die in the air, or you're just out of the fight. Which is kind of what you're doing, right? You want to blink in and do the same kind of thing, but you want to keep fighting after that. Um, so that is something to watch out for. All the other gods shouldn't be too difficult. A lot of people like Sir Ket in the uh, Alquang. I think it's very, you can play around it. I don't think it's too difficult. Uh, Sir Ket's kind of doing the same thing. Sir Ket wants to kind of blink in, get you the beads, alt you, and just kind of get you out of the fight or kill you instantly. So when you're playing those gods, watch out for those play styles. Pretty straightforward for Quang. The god really isn't that difficult once you understand the play style and the idea that Quang is a mage. Quang is not played like an auto attack assassin. Back in the day, when Quang first came out, the god wasn't played too much because everyone couldn't figure out how to build him. Once everyone did, like realized mage build is disgustingly good, he's been nerfed like three times and he's still fucking amazing. The god is very good. You can pub stomp so easily. Just understand farming up your items is key. Making sure you don't fall behind is key. And then making sure you're not in the middle of team fights is key. If you focus on those things, I think you will do great. I think this guy will help you out a lot if you really take those things away from this. So uh, make sure in the comments below you tell me what other gods you want me to cover. As I said, I want to do assassins and then probably mages. So stick to those gods and I'll do what I can. Uh, hopefully this guide helped you a little bit. There will be gameplay later on. And as I always say, if the build is different in the gameplay, don't freak out. It's okay. I, in casuals, in ranked, and everything that isn't competitive, I like to mess around with my builds and try things for fun. 
So don't always pay too much attention to the gameplay builds. Pay attention to the guide build. I will see you guys in the video later.